on the 15th, the Passover, I guess it would be uh, <clears throat> 15th to us, the blood moon, the first, occurs. You've seen my other video about it before. I put the chart up, you can tell whenever they are. You got some discussion on, they don't mean anything, no big deal, just another day. You got some nitpicking going on about, well, some things happened, but not exactly on it, what not. You've seen some recent articles about them. I saw one on MSN talked about tetrads. Now they weren't that rare, but it left one little thing out. It didn't say one thing about blood moon on Passover and Sukkot. Not one thing. Didn't mention anything about falling on those holy times and how rare that was. I think it's eight times in 2,000 years. Is that rare enough for you? Eight times, I think, in 2,000 years? That's big. So, <clears throat> there's several different things that have uh, historically occurred. Maybe not right dead center on those days but the year before or the year after in the gen in that time frame oh you cannot mark this off as another day this is the God's meeting time with you the creator the guy who made everything whose kingdom you will enter into at the end of your lifetime or not. He did say he created the sun and the moon, but one thing he said was for signs. So it's his appointment time. It's his meeting time. He doesn't fly an airplane over in the sky with a big banner behind it with writing on it that describes to you what he's saying. He uses these objects that you can look up and see as a signal to you and me. So this is what it'll be. You'll have your lunar eclipse on the 15th, the Passover. And I cannot think of huge things that have preceded in the, in the last year before this. I mean totally historically huge things. So my thinking is that within the next year we're going to be something. And then we're going to go to 2015 and when you get the, the blood moon on Sukkot, I believe that I believe that one is supposed to be not only a blood moon but a blood moon super moon. So that's even more rare, I would think, to have a super moon that's going to be a blood moon on another Jewish holy day. <clears throat> so we have to realize not only is this rare, not only is this special, not only is this historic, but how truly lucky we are, even though things suck like they do in the world as it is, you know, a large majority of it, we are privileged and blessed to live in the time that we do. If we are the last generation and we are living in the end time, 
then we are seeing ourselves these signs and live in the prophecies. Now, it's going to come a time pretty quick. You're going to make a choice. You're not going to have a, an option. The atheists, the agnostics, the non-Christians, you're going to have a last chance sooner or later to make your choice. Either come to Him and acknowledge Him as the one and only God. Either believe Jesus died for you and open a doorway to forgiveness and salvation washed your sin clean and erased it or you don't you're not going to be in the middle you're not going to straddle the fence and say I need a little more proof I need something I can touch and see and smell and then I'll believe that's not good enough and he's not going to let that ride it's always been one side or the other it's always been his goodness and the other side's evil. Evil versus good. The devil versus God. That's all it's ever been. You got two sides and that's it. He doesn't want to see people go to hell. That's not why he made you. To lose you. He's got faith in you. You need to come to Him and believe in Him and live right and have faith in Him. There's so many evils in the world. I don't know if I can even just describe every single one of them. But it is getting worse. There is no doubt about that. You think that the economy is picking up, huh? You think things are getting better? The Rothschilds control well over half of the world's money. And you know they play for the other team, the evil team. So many others play for the other side also in conjunction with them. And they can keep this illusion going quite some time until their dark Lord Master gives them other orders but it's coming pretty soon down the pipe when things are going to change for the dollar. <clears throat> because if you listen to V, the guerrilla economist, and think about what he's saying about these new tr trade agreements being made with China and a lot of other nations that are going to have the biggest trading block on the planet once they all get together and do it. And you see so many of them that are wanting to move away from the dollar. And when you understand the dollar has nothing backing it up. You know, the petrol dollar, we no longer back it up with gold or anything. Then you understand that it doesn't just have to be a piece of paper that you can wipe yourself with after you go to the bathroom as in valueless. You'll still have your pieces of papers with the numbers on them but when it becomes basically not traded in the worth falls and you see that in way way higher prices for what we will be buying 
If you think food's high now, if you think gasoline's high now, clothes, consumer goods, we haven't seen anything yet when they decide to move away and the rest of the world trades in something different. That doesn't mean that it's a one world currency come yet. It means harder times and more of a big squeeze for you and me. And that probably is a good idea if there is a way that you can have uh, concrete assets such as uh, maybe some gold and silver. If you could at all afford to buy a little bit of it, probably silver would be the most affordable thing for any of us since it's like 20 bucks or something as compared to 1300 for gold. But you can see it coming. And the Ukraine situation is, is is not what everybody thinks it is. Our country has become an evil country. Our country does go help overthrow other people's governments and install puppet leaders. They do. They really do. You can think about Iraq. <clears throat> I mean, Saddam was going to start making us pay him in euros, I believe, instead of dollars. I think Gaddafi was going to do the same thing. You know, the scumbags that they were and the evil that they did, they did. Nobody's arguing that they didn't. But it doesn't strike you odd that they're dead now. And they were going to basically tell us to screw ourselves and we're not going to take your buck no more. You go take your bucks and you go get euros to pay us in. And there's some other things mixed in there too, but I don't really have time with the, what's left to, to get into that. But we seem to have gotten our hands caught in the cookie jar in the Ukraine. Russia's not the, the save-all, the good guys save-all, not by far. They're just another country that wants control on their side of the world for the resources and such that is claiming by them to be theirs from ancient times, you know. Well, maybe not ancient times, but quite a while back of well, their claim to the Ukraine. Crimea and such and they're not we're not going to do anything because it is it is quite true that Putin could take certain steps that would definitely kick us in the balls economically and knock us completely to the ground and punish us harshly So they're not ready for anything like that. <clears throat> and that's why you're seeing no military, no anything like that. And they might pay some mercenaries like they did before. You know, a small band of them to go over there and start some crap, but you're not going to see planes and destroyers and anything hardware-wise like that. So back to the moons, lift up your head and watch it and understand that it means something for all the world, all mankind, because time is running out. Make good use of it. Come to the Lord. He loves you and he doesn't want you to be lost.